Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harriton. Today I'm spending time in a beautiful place with a beautiful tree. This is American Beech. American Beech is an iconic tree whose presence in this forest is intimately connected to the lives of many animals, plants, and fungi. Should the health of this species ever be seriously compromised, the composition and dynamics of the forest ecosystem would drastically change. Now, American Beech has been the target of various attacks over the past century, some more serious than others. But in recent years, a new disease has been threatening the health of American Beech, making some people wonder what the future holds for this dominant forest tree. The disease I'm referring to is known as Beech Leaf Disease and it was first detected in Lake County, Ohio in 2012. Since then, beech leaf disease has been rapidly expanding its range and is now found in at least a dozen states in the US as well as in Ontario, Canada. The telltale sign of beech leaf disease is a noticeable striping or banding pattern between the veins of the leaves with alternating dark and light green colors. The affected leaves are thickened and they feel leathery. Yellowing and browning of the leaves also occur, and the affected leaves will often wither and fall off the tree prematurely. All sizes of American beech can be affected, but in some areas, mortality is greatest among smaller trees, primarily among the sapling and pole-sized trees. These smaller trees usually die within two to five years of infection. Among larger trees, including the dominants and intermediates in the overstory, occasional mortality has been observed within seven years of infection. Now you may be wondering what in the world is causing beech leaf disease? Is it bacteria? Is it a fungus? Is it an insect? Is it a virus? Well, when the disease first appeared in Lake County, Ohio, researchers had no idea what was going on. But after careful analysis, a culprit was discovered under the microscope. A nematode, or a nematode, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it. Nematodes, or nematodes, are roundworms that occupy a wide variety of habitats, including soils, human digestive tracts, gold mines, and the inner tissues of plants, including the inner tissues of American beech trees. The specific nematode associated with beech leaf disease is considered to be non-native to North America. And researchers hypothesized that infection of a leaf starts with the presence of the nematode in the bud of the leaf. Some researchers think that the nematode works in conjunction with bacteria to afflict damage to the tree, but evidence to support this claim isn't conclusive. What is known at this time is that the microscopic nematode is present in the majority of leaves affected by beech leaf disease, and trees that do succumb to the disease can die within a decade. What does this mean for forests? Well, I mentioned earlier that American beech is no stranger to disease. For over 100 years, American beech has been the target of a lethal condition known as beech bark disease. Beech bark disease is caused by the combined efforts of a scale insect and fungi, and the disease affects all sizes of beech, but it can disproportionately affect large diameter trees. Beech leaf disease also affects trees in every canopy layer, but as I mentioned before, in certain regions, symptoms are more severe in saplings. Severe symptoms can lead to mortality, and when smaller trees die in sufficient numbers, the species cannot regenerate successfully from the sapling to the mature stage. And according to some people, that's a real problem. But the targeting of smaller trees in some areas isn't necessarily a bad thing, because American beech is a prolific root sprouter, and dense thickets of beech root sprouts can actually interfere with the regeneration of other woody plant species, ultimately causing a reduction in biodiversity. So perhaps the removal of beech saplings in these crowded forests is a solution to a problem that some landowners, foresters, and conservation groups have been contending with for some time. But remember, larger American beech trees also succumb to the disease. And if our forests experience a reduction in the total number of beech trees, this won't go unnoticed by wildlife because American beech is a significant mast species whose nuts are eaten by squirrels, chipmunks, black bear, deer, foxes, and blue jays. In the short term, cavity nesting animals, including pileated woodpeckers, might benefit from all the dead wood. But long term, these animals could be negatively affected by a reduction in the number of mature beech trees. 
Likewise, the fungi that feast directly on American beech might benefit in the short term, but the fungi that create mutualistic symbioses with living beech trees would be negatively affected. Because American beech in the northeastern forests often grows in association with sugar maple, ecologists predict that should American beech suffer major losses due to beech leaf and bark disease, sugar maple, Acer saccharum, is likely to take its place as the dominant late successional forest tree. So what are we supposed to do about this? Is there anything we can do about this? Well, I do not have the answers and researchers aren't entirely sure what's going on either because this is such a new phenomenon in our forests. But I do know that some people are investigating the use of insecticides and other chemical treatments. Specifically, a compound known as emamectin benzoate is being studied as a potential insecticide for its role in treating beech leaf disease. But it is worth noting that this compound is corrosive, it's acutely toxic, it's a health hazard, it's an environmental hazard, it's toxic if swallowed, it causes damage to organs, and it's very toxic to aquatic life with long-lasting effects. There is also a product known as polyphosphite 30, which is a fertilizer that is commonly used on golf courses. Polyphosphite 30 is recommended by some people as a treatment for beech leaf disease, but it is worth noting that this product is acutely toxic and hazardous to the aquatic environment. Now remember, I don't have the answers, but I do have things that I wonder about, and something that I wonder about is whether the long-lasting impact of something like emamectin benzoate or polyphosphite 30 is actually far worse to the land and to humans than is a reduction in the number of American beech trees. And I also wonder if the presence of beech leaf disease is yet another symptom resulting from our intense desire to have whatever we want, whenever we want, from wherever in the world we want, all while expecting the land to remain unaffected by these wants. I don't really know. I do have some hunches. Ultimately, I'm just here to report on something that's happening to the land where I live, and I will encourage you to spend some time looking at the trees where you live and to notice what's going on with them. What do you see? What do you notice? Is it good? Is it bad? Or does thinking, as the old saying goes, make it so? You tell me. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, I encourage you to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel and to head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter so that we can stay in touch. Thanks again for watching. I will see you on the next video.